because, yeah, like you said, there's a whole lot of purifies here to deal with a lot of CC that Myanmar has available to them. Look at this, all the early rotations happening here for Juno, but you know, one thing too, I, I'm not sure if anyone's gonna get a kill with this early on with this lineup, but with Ruby DD running, like you said, this kind of new Cho having that passive, it's I think it's like 180% is what yep. you get with that bonus attack. But then you have a concussive blast. So I'm, I'm wondering how the lineup or how the matchup with even going against a Charizla performs in terms of like the numbers and being able to stay, or is it just purely, I'm going to go and try to get some pickoffs, you know, because right now they're just duking it out. And you can see Luffy also went for the Brave Smite. So once he goes with uh, War Axe, most likely he'll be able to just kind of stay in the lane as long as he wants to. So on mid lane, still Albert trying to find uh, early pickoffs, but I just don't think it's going to happen here until these level fours, especially that turtle still 30 seconds away. But look at this Ken fighting for his own XP, and Albert will go ahead and just continue on with this. I think, uh, you know, with Brave Smite, hold on. Down below, like in Palace, Juno gonna be caught in the spatial migration as well. Does have the Purify to get out, but the damage is certainly there. And Juno will have to respect it by backing away. And back to the Brave Smite. So most Terizlas that we've seen, especially with the War Axe change, they go for the Impure Rage to get more mana, and then they just go and rely on the sustainability of the War Axe. So the fact that he's doubling down means he's ready for Myanmar's, <laughs> you know, full-on team fight and the longer team fights. As Albert starts his turtle, Keyboy's hovering over, doesn't have that level four just yet, but has already been able to shove in that bottom lane, or that mid lane, actually. Oh. Good actual echo, and that's the spatial migration. Albert with the fracture, not even, well, actually, will be able to go for it. Now penalties don't lock him down with the Violet Requiem. Albert picking up the first blood, as Jide will be forced to run away, but Ooh. even then, the Retribution slows him down, gives Albert the movement speed to catch back up and to take him out. A 2-0 start for Indonesia. Man, this is what I was saying. Even yesterday, Mirko, like, once Albert gets snowballing on any of the assassins that he picks up he's going to continue to just be very aggressive so you got to be if you're Myanmar you got to be able to answer this and that might just be also protecting Ken a little bit more because that pressure could get a little overwhelming you're seeing nothing locked in first item wise yet for both teams but Indonesia getting themselves already 2k ahead against Myanmar with all those exchanges is where they usually start their games it starts a little bit slower, they get the advantage going, and then it snowballs out of control. We saw this the last time, like I said, continuously with this lineup, these three heroes, the uh, Keyboy on that Guinevere, you have Albert on the Nolan, and of course the CW on the Harith. There's a ton of damage potential that can happen here early on. And, and for Myanmar, they have tanky enough heroes. But, you know, that's kind of what they're hoping for, that we're just tanky and durable enough to deal with the burst damage that can come through. I mean, even look at this, Ken. Spatial migration again with the Violet Requiem straight into the Fracture, and Jide will be able to get the implosion down. Sun, an implosion as well, not connecting to anyone, but Jide will still be melted down slowly but surely for Albert to pick up a killing spree in the first three minutes of the game. Deja vu for game one yesterday, or game two. Yeah, you see what I'm saying, though? Like, like Myanmar, they drafted this because they're like, I hope we're tanky enough. To go and deal with this burst but it's just showing that they're not and a lot of that has to do with the way indonesia is cycling through their cc and that's whether and we talked about this extensively in the draft that keyboy was probably going to pick up the guinevere and i'm surprised that it actually wasn't banned out the last ban from myanmar because it works wonders with this lineup so now that this turtle's up here myanmar despite them being down already you know three four thousand gold they do still want to fight for this objective and as long as they at least, you know, watch out for Keyboy setting up just like that, that's good. They don't get set up, so at least, you know, they, they avoid it for now, but still they have to win this battle. Es Echo going to be dropped down too. They get the vision, but still both teams are ready to go for it. It's going to be a full-on fight. The penalty zone onto Ken now with the implosion as well. Locking him down. Luffy dealing a lot of damage. Ken will be taken out, but just for the hammer swing as CW jumps with the synchro vision and Albert gets rid of the frontliners. Juno completely zoned away. They're being overwhelmed by damage. Another spatial migration into the final requiem. Keyboy finding an angle to attack again, and Justin doesn't have mana to play with. Oh no, no actual recoming. And Albert can just walk up fracture. And now the lethal ignition taking down slowly but surely. Albert fade away kill under the tier two. As he now goes for the steal. I don't think he'll be able to do so. Ken has the retribution. But man, Albert's already three levels ahead. Oh, off 
awesome. We're going to take a look at this replay here on how this kind of unfolded. And like I was saying, you know, Myanmar, I'm surprised they really do want to go and fight for this because, wow, that's all in reverse, by the way. So <laughs> it's all in reverse, I think. But, dynamics, bro. Uh, dynamics, the dynamics. But, you know, as we saw that, as we saw that unfold, it was Myanmar just choosing to fight for that. And honestly, it didn't work out for them the way they wanted it to. And Albert also, with that whole exchange, now picks up the Sky Piercer. Look at Keyboy. Like, this is just how confident Keyboy is with this Guinevere. Given the information, he's the walking ward. Social migration only onto the orange buff. Albert decides to just take it away from Ken. Being four levels ahead, it does, you know, look quite easy to go for these steals. But, man, the fact that he was... What is up with Albert on the assassins? It just... Do you remember last game? You know, he played the Baksha. It looked like, <laughs> okay, he's good. But on the assassins, <laughs> it's, it's a different level entirely. Ruby DD. Ruby Keep, no, I don't think you can really even go for this. Ruby going to be able to outdamage Ruby DD. That's right, Keyboy! Again with a Violet Requiem. Walking ducks him up as Ruby goes in with a hammer swing. And Keyboy gets out. Albert with Fracture. Now CW goes over to the bottom for Saz again with the implosion steal to corral them together for that collapse. 11 and 0. Oh. And now it's going to be Ruby DD who gets slain by CW. My goodness. Just like yesterday. The same thing is happening with this lineup that just has a few changes, but what the heck? Indonesia just pulling forward again. Myanmar, you guys have to understand, Myanmar was basically undefeated in the group stage. They just dominated time and time again, and now Indonesia, even though they lost in the group stage at this point, it looks like they are playing perfectly with this lineup with this composition of heroes even and albert yet to be killed yet to be stopped picks up a malefic roar i don't even know what myanmar can do at this point they have to somehow some way allow juno to get online and this is exactly why i say man i don't like roger in the gold lane i'd rather have him in the jungle because it's just so difficult for him to farm up at this point to get the space that he needs to work with and I mean, you're looking at the disparity in terms of the gold. He's also just very far behind CW right now. He hasn't died, which is great. But look at all the setup potential you have with these heroes, and you have no follow-up. If he enters, if Juno tries to go in, even like him pounce in, he's probably going to get blown up before he gets a chance to get a hit off. So that's the t that's the troubling part about having this Roger in the gold lane. And so now you're forced. Hold on. Keyboy going to be locked down. By the way, the dragon as well. And Keyboy will be locked down by everything. Everything in the kitchen sink to get Myanmar. Oh, no. Their first kill in the game. CW going for the chase, though. Officer Monforce will not be able to fully go for that kill onto Juno, who still has the Purify. But Indonesia want to utilize this resource advantage now. As Ruby Didi walks up again with the Shunpu. It's going to be Albert walking up. Deals some damage back onto Ken. Forcing him to half HP. Asan deals with them in the back as well. Isolating and zoning them away from this tier 2 in the mid lane. Well, Sans also picks up the implosion, so we might have to keep an eye on a possible play. Doesn't have a flicker, went with the Purify instead, but can still possibly use that in a quite a, a surprising way. You'll have to see it unfold. Taking a look at the items real quick, too. You can see them coming into place already. CW has those three items working on the next here. Could be a Holy Crystal next or just going into even some more penetration because right now there's too much... There's just too much damage overloading Myanmar. When they get a pick off with Ruby DD, it's great, but it, he has to do so much work to get it through. So as they try to defend this tier two turret, look at this. Albert's just gonna go ahead and start up the Lord. He doesn't need the rest of the team to come here. They can just keep this, you know, Myanmar at bay from even entering their jungle. Ruby DD, like just trying to make something happen will just get poked down, you know? And that's just Sans. Sans is zero, zero, and 10. It's nearly impossible to get the kill on this Valentina. So with that, Myanmar is going to find themselves once again on the defensive, trying to hold on the best they can for Indonesia the, with the tools they have and the fact that Sans has an implosion. It could possibly force this situation in here. Wow. And shields are going to be popped already before. Again with the engage, now Jinmaj Zaman Force onto the back, doing a lot of damage. Ruby DD will lose his life, and Jide as well just gets melted down, completely obliterated under the base turret as Indonesia continue the siege. Now into the top lane, that's going to be base turret number two taken down as Lipsy zones them again with some damage on that hammer, swinging it by Ken. Going to take a little bit of that as Sans again, also goes with the splash. Albert looking for the play, Keyboy! Again, the space of migration into the Winter Crown as he pops in the Violet Requiem, but look at Justin who can't even defend. Juno forced back all the way to the fountain. Ruby 
DVD spawns back 